Right, let me try that again. Can anybody hear me or see me? All right, everybody. Uh, my name is Dana Utman. I am a seasonal interpreter, uh, both at Patrick's Point and Prairie Creek Redwood uh, National Park. Um, and uh, today, um, I'm going to be at Prairie Creek uh, talking about photography. Oh, good. So somebody could hear me. Um, anyway, um, I appreciate you you uh, you joining me. Uh, we do this every day at three o'clock. Um, and also we do um, our live campfire program, uh, which is also virtual every Saturday at 7 through the month of August. But today, um, I also want to thank the Yurok tribe as well and their ancestors for these beautiful places I get to spend time in. And, and you too, if you can make it out here sometime, unless you already have, of course. Um, today I get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is photography. I started doing photography seriously in 2001. Um, and I've attended some classes at Humboldt State. I've also um, taken some remarkable uh, workshops by some great photographers. Um, it's uh, something I love doing. Loud and clear. Good. Wow. In Australia. I'm loud and clear in Australia. No, not even shouting. Um, anyway, I'm going to be talking about photography, and it's only about 10 minutes, so what I'm going to be trying to get into is how you can prepare uh, for park and doing photography. Everybody likes to do photography, almost everybody. Almost everybody has a cell phone. And cell phones are a great way to do photography. Um, but what I enjoy is using uh, my camera here, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I'll tell you what I carry in my pack as well. Um, so the first thing you should probably be aware of is that if you aren't doing commercial photography and you're just here to enjoy the park and you want to do some personal photography, no permits are required, but you're not supposed to, um, you know, um, get it, uh, be, uh, do, uh, have either visitors or animals, um, uh, have, have it be a problem for either one of them, for any other visitors or, or, or animals, any of the wild animals. Make sure you're here during the park hours. Uh, when you're doing photography, um, don't set up any kind of, uh, you know, um, a, a studio or outdoor studio or anything like that to do your photography. But everybody, you know, part of uh, a state and national park philosophy is that everybody should be able to enjoy doing a personal photography at the very least uh, because it's part of the experience. If you want to do commercial photography, there are permits that are, are required. Um, but we're not going to talk about that today because we have so very little time. Um, if you want to come to a park um, and find out what's going on, which is a good idea before you show up so you know uh, more about the park, you should, a lot of these are online, you should get the newsletters and the brochures. So you can find out what's, you know, where the trails are, uh, where, what you can explore. Um, you want to be able to also find out about sunset and sunrise because that's usually some of the best light, of course, the golden hours. Um, you want to be able to find out about the animals. If you want to be able to shoot animals, where to, you know, where you might be able to find them. Just make sure you don't get too close. We have a lot of Roosevelt elk here. And you don't want to get closer than 75 feet. Um, yesterday. I was uh, exploring a place. I was all by myself uh, in part of Redwood National Park, and I happened to uh, come upon four bears, uh, probably a, a sow, a mom, and her three cubs. And one, two of them were below me, and two of them were uh, above me. Um, so I made sure that um, I started walking back a little bit, making sure I didn't go forward until I knew what was going on. But even then, I couldn't take a, a, any do any photography, even though I had a camera slung on my shoulder, uh, because the, you know they move so quickly. It's hard to be able to uh, capture uh, animals unless you're, you're really set up for them. Make sure that um, you know your camera really well. Check out your manual. A lot of people um, that I've talked to have told me that um, 
they don't, don't read their manual. They think that the camera is going to be able to do everything for them, and it does a lot. But there's a lot more magic involved in that computer that you're holding if you read the manual. Um, another thing that you might want to do is to bring a little book like this. This is waterproof, so you can start taking notes. Uh, so, so you can learn, you know, you know what, what kind of uh, uh, lens were you using, or um, what, was it, what was the day, what was the light like, and so forth. Um, so you can learn from what you're doing, and hopefully also from your mistakes, so you can only get better. Now, hello from Red Redway. Hi, Kim. From Carlsbad. All right. How you doing, Omar? Now, um... That being said, there's no substitute for you, the you know, your imagination, your creativity. A camera is good. I, I love my camera. I, I love the uh, technology. It's a lot better than when I started out and we had Robin Shorter, a diary to go with your photo diary. There you go. A diary to go with your photo diary. Um, that's, uh, if, I, if there are any questions, I'll try and remember to read them back so everyone knows what the question is. That wasn't a question, so it just, that was a comment. So, um, the, as I said, the best thing to do is, is to be creative, to be able to know what you're doing, at least have a pretty good idea about what you're doing before you get to the park. So you're not spending all your time trying to evaluate uh, what you want to be doing or, or what kind of photography or what kind of photographer you are. You know what your camera is doing. If you don't, if you don't check out your camera and um, enjoy it, uh, you know from time to time. Sometimes, if, I mean, if you really want to be a good photographer, you're going to take your camera everywhere with you, right? You're going to start shooting everywhere to understand uh, how to be quick on it, quick on the draw. You know uh, what your camera has to offer. Because uh, when you come to the park, if there's an animal or something going on, you might miss it. Hi, Dana. Great tips for. For photographs, any good pointers on photographing in the mixed light in Redwood Forest? The Dapple Sunlight Place have it with exposures. Yes, I do, and I'll get to that in a moment. I have one fairly easy solution for that kind of stuff. Um, at any rate, so uh, you want to, as a suggestion, think about coming to the park when it's not so crowded. Uh, one of my favorite memories is going to Yosemite National Park and um, being able to walk to Vernal Falls in the winter. I think I met one couple on the way Got to the bridge overlooking Vernal Falls. There was nobody around. It was just me. It was snowing. And, you know, I was standing on the bridge with my camera. And I got some great shots. But I, you know, I just also felt so wonderful being there. I think that kind of um, reflected on some of my photography for that day. Okay, Robin says, if you don't get a good shot, you can call it artistic interpretation. Ha ha. Sure, you're the artist. You get to do whatever you want. Um, you know, we start working with formulas in the beginning, like the rule of thirds. Um, and then later, as you get to adapt and you begin to understand photography better, you know, you, you have a, a, an intuitive sense about what you want and about what you should be doing. So, um, as I said, it's good to take notes. It's good to try and avoid crowds and be prepared by getting the brochures. Like I said, many of them are online. Um, Bring plenty of, of, of memory, not up here, memory cards, so that you can just shoot to your heart's extent. Um, it doesn't matter. You can go back and until you get back home, you can, you know, start looking at them. But you can shoot thousands of photographs today. You know, there's one time when you can only, uh, you might have had a 36 uh, uh, shot roll of film, and that's all you could do. So you were, you had to be very careful with what you were photographing. You know, but today you can go out, and shoot as much as you want, get back home, or if you bring a laptop with you and start doing some post processing, and you, you know, out of those 2,000 shots, there might be 25 that are fantastic, but it doesn't matter because the most important thing is it's it's a reflection of who you are, how much you enjoyed it, and the fact that uh, you probably had a great time while you were in in the park that you were visiting. So the other uh, so suggestion I would uh, give to you is that to check out your camera before you start shooting because it has settings and if I don't know how many times I've gone out and I started shooting something and I looked at my photographs and I thought why is this so saturated or why is this so 
blown out and that's because of the setting I had at the, t at the time um, and so um, and then I had and then I realized I just wasted some good shots um, and then I, I went back and I uh, did the proper settings and you know the shots after that were much better but I should have been prepared in the beginning I should have uh, thought about those settings before I started uh, let's see what else we got here um, you want to be checking out other things like your, your white balance. Um, on a day like today, I don't know if you probably can't tell, you can look at the sky behind me. It's kind of overcast and foggy, um, and I'm standing under a tree. So my setting uh, on a day like today, because I'm in the shadow, would be for the shade. And that would bring it a, make it a little bit more golden in the photographs. But I also know I can adjust those later on in post-processing. So it's not a problem. Which brings me to another thought. And that is that if you can, and you're and you know how to use your camera, try and get the raw settings. Most cameras will process internally by themselves, um, so they're going to adjust for color, they're going to adjust for sharpness, and so on and so forth. And you have no control over that. Now, a lot of a lot of times it's fine because your images are going to be great anyway, right? But if you want full control and you want all the information your camera can provide, uh, because a lot of it's thrown out if you if you don't shoot. It's compressed in JPEG. A lot of the information is thrown out. You'll never get it back. But if you if you uh, use RAW, you'll have all that information, and you get to decide what you're going to do with it when you post-process. There's other settings like uh, uh, well, your timers. I've had my camera set uh, for um, you know 12 second time timing, so that it, can, it was going to go off when I when I had a, a family reunion or something and then when I went out to shoot later it was still at 12 seconds and I want, went to take a shot there's nothing I could do because the camera is going to wait 12 seconds before it goes off by then whatever I was doing was gone um, it wasn't there any longer so you know check out your your settings um, so with that in mind um, let's see if there's a couple other things I wanted to bring up um, well if you're going to be doing uh, a lot of uh, this it goes back to what uh, Kim, um, okay, so Kim says she always shoots in RAW and JPEG, and that's true. I never shoot in JPEG because I could always uh, 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 turn them into JPEGs later on if I want to, and I don't want to take up the room in my, in my memory card. But um, I think it was Kim, I think you were asking me about um, shooting in a, in, a, in a dappled redwood forest, and um, my solution is this. Go out there and do bracketing, you know. So for every shot you want to do, make get five of them with different exposures, um, and and then you can um, combine all those exposures into one. Hi Dana, happy to see you on this live stream. Hi Sophie, oh hi Sophie, I know Sophie. Good to see you, or actually good to see your comment. Um, so anyway, you can go out and, and it's called you know HDR. I'm sure many of you heard of that, right? Um, high dynamic range. So if you go out there and take five shots uh, at different exposures and and you blend them together, uh, you have to have the software to do that. Um, you can have full control over the lighting. So if there's too much shade in one place, you can you can uh, you can reduce that shade. You can bring in more light, um, and you you have full control. Um, it doesn't matter if it's if you know there's some. There is some, uh, of course, the, the best thing you could do is get the best shot in the first place. But if you if you can't do that because of the lighting, then you, you know try HDR, try high dynamic range with five exposures, and then you'll be able to do what you want. Um, so let's see what else have we got here that I want to make sure I talk about. I got some things on my table that I want to be able to present to you. Um, well, if you um, come to the park. You might want to think about getting here early because of the, of the light and, and leaving late. You know, the, the afternoon is usually when the light is most flat and it's not going to be very exciting. Um, you also want to be able to do some other things such as, um, well, you can experiment with wildlife and you can go out and capturing wildlife can be very difficult because they don't sit around and wait for you to make sure that you've got plenty of time to, to be able to photograph them. You gotta be quick, you gotta be really quick, you have to be set up for it. And one of the things I do is use manual, um, I don't use auto uh, sharpness, I use manual so that um, I can be able to have more control um, when there's an animal uh, around. 
Uh, let's see. Tanya Priestley says hi. And yes, I also use Photoshop more than anything else uh, because I'm so used to it. I've been using it for years. Um, I told you about uh, the rule of thirds, which means you're going to try and there's, you know, uh, you're going to try and put an image that, that you're focusing on that's the main subject in a certain portion of a grid, one of the thirds in, the, in, a, in an image. But after a while, you know, and that's a good way to start, but after a while it doesn't really matter anymore. You sort of have an intuitive sense. Uh, you can use filters. Um, sometimes, uh, like a polarizing filter is really good. Um, especially if, it's, if there's a lot of light outside. Um, but with Photoshop, um, they have often, you, you can get filters as, third, um, um, as, as well to use. So if you're missing something that a, or a filter you didn't use, you might be able to add that in afterwards. Photography is quite different than it was 20 years ago when cameras might have been four megapixels and they were still expensive. Um, now, you know, my, my, my camera, is, is uh, I don't know if you can see it. My camera is uh, 24 megapixels, so I when I print, I print 17 by 22, which is you know decent enough. It's, um, I was going to show you some of my photographs here at the end, um, but remember, as I said before, the most important thing is you, your creativeness. You're the photographer. You're the artist, and that's what photography is. It's art, and so. You want to kind of imagine uh, quite often what you want to shoot before you start doing it because if you don't, can't imagine, you probably can't photograph it. Remember that um, uh, the most important thing about photography as far as I'm concerned is the light. And I think it is for most photographers. It's, it's the light that makes a, a photograph incredible. Um, if, it's, if there's not enough light, um, you might just get you know, a lot of dark stuff. If there's too much light, it's going to be blown out. Um, and what you want is contrast, tonal contrast, T-O-N-A-L contrast. What you want is to uh, be able to bring things out in your photograph that make them more than um, just two-dimensional, if you can. Let's see, Kim Cabrera, funny story, my best mountain lion encounter happened when I was, when I had my camera around my neck, but all I had time to do was raise the camera and fire off a few shots before it disappeared. Yeah, it happens all the time, you know. All right, Tanya says she can't wait to see my photos. Oops, and I think it's about time I do that. Hold on. So this is Queen Anne's lace, but you notice how the, the contrast, the, the idea was to bring out, was to bring out the plant, and it's, there's vignetting around the end so that people would focus on this right here. I hope you can see that. When I talked about HDR, or high dynamic range, this is what I do with this one here. This was an abandoned truck over in Trinidad Beach. And it, there wouldn't be um, all this tonal contrast like you see here um, without being, a, be, being able to do HDR. You can see just about everything and more than you can than you could with the naked eye. This is uh, the Merced River in Yosemite, and it looks very painterly because I use filters, and that was the intent. A shot over here at Prairie Creek. It's the Redwoods. The intent here was, you know, I was trying to make it, the, give it the real feel of what it would be like if, if you were walking through the Redwoods. Finally, this is Stone Lagoon. 
This was taken in the evening, trying to capture that, that golden light. Trying to be there at the right time. Okay, I don't know how, I can never tell how well you guys can see what I'm trying to show you because I don't get to look at the screen when I do that. So I hope they turned out okay. Um, at any rate, are there any questions or any comments? Thank you, Gail. Gail Heifetz said that they were nice. Tanya said they were beautiful. I appreciate that. Very nice. Thank you. Any other questions? Or comments? Okay, so remember, I guess that if there was any real messages here, it has to do with be prepared, know your camera, know your surroundings, know the park. Um, lovely redwoods, yes. Oh, thank you, the photograph, yes. I thought you were talking about the park here. Um, know the park, know the animals, uh, know what, what uh, your restrictions are as a, as a visitor. Um, thanks again, Kim. Oh, you couldn't really see her said. Let me show you again, okay? Hopefully you can see that. But I guess the most important thing, you're welcome, Tanya. Uh, I guess the most important thing is that you have fun and you get to be as creative as you want to be able to make the, the best art that you can and have fun while you're doing it. Because what's the use of doing photography if you're not having fun? So I hope to see you around the park sometime. Don't forget that we um, do this every day at 3 o'clock and we are going to be doing the virtual campfires for the month of August at 7 o'clock. Um, Thanks for showing up. Um, hope to see you next week. Um, and uh, just take care of yourselves during these uh, very strange times that we're living in. Thank you. Bye.